Hello, welcome to Clarity Design. Um, I'm going to do a quick tutorial about how we can get um, images from Photoshop, stuff that we've made and edited, and how we can put that into uh, After Effects and start playing around with the layers. So without further ado, let's cover some of these basic steps and see where we get to. All right, so the first thing is I'm going to make a, uh, a new image. Um, because I know it's going to go into After Effects, I can set up a, uh, uh, a deliberate um, size of the sheet. So you've got film and video options here. And I could set it up to exactly the same size as the NTSC there. You can see you've got lots of options down there you can choose from. Here, I'm just going to change that. So I'll make it um, about twice the size. Just have to move my microphone, sorry, it's on, on the keyboard. Um, I'll just make that uh, twice the size. Uh, so that will be 1440. Um, and I'll click OK there. It might throw up an error. Just don't worry about that. OK. And um, I've got a new uh, page there. So what I'm going to do is just generate a few layers. So we'll just go through some basic stuff in... Uh, Oh, sorry about that. Let's just dock that at the top here. Just dock up. Come on. There we go. There we go. Um, so uh, you just go through some basics here. So I'm just going to generate a really basic background and have a little bit of fun with this. So uh, first of all, I'm just uh, check these colours, blue and grey, and I'm going to go to filter. I'm just going to generate some clouds. This is just for the example. Obviously, you could have something much more complicated or different from this entirely. Um, so it's just for the example. So there I've got um, a, a kind of randomized background. Um, I'm going to duplicate that layer to a new layer and then um, I'm going to just play around with that by generating a selection. Now there's lots of ways to generate selections. In this case I'm going to use um, a soft edge brush. See it's quite large and I'm going to use the quick selection tool. I'm just going to paint out the middle section here uh, probably just over to that side actually. Um, so just going to paint out that section and as soon as I click this again this quick selection tool that gives me a selection but it gives me the um, opposite of what I want. Okay, so I've painted out the middle that's the bit I wanted selected and I need to just inverse that selection so that's up in select and I can go to inverse um, you can see there's shortcuts for that as well and that gives me the sele selection I want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a filter effect on that part that's selected so I'm going to go up to filter I'm going to use blur and I'm going to use a let's use a motion blur and we'll do it in a particular direction so that's a little bit too much, that's a bit better. Okay, so I've just turned it down a little bit. I'm going to click OK then, I'm quite happy with that. Press Control D to get rid of the uh, uh, selection there. And I'm quite happy with that layer. I'm going to go straight to a new layer and I can start adding text. Uh, adding text is fairly easy, so just I'm going to pop some text in there. So a uh, little bit of text. Uh, could say whatever you want it to say. Um, again, this is just, just for the example, so it doesn't really matter. Press Shift to hold down whilst you're changing the size to keep it in proportion let go so that's about right um, and I'm going to position that uh, in the center at the moment it doesn't really matter because it's going to change when I move it into the other program in a minute um, so with that uh, sorted I can uh, let's just add some effects to it make it stand out or sit back a little bit more so let's go into the uh, drop shadows have a look at that maybe so I've got a drop shadow on there or I could use inner shadows uh, that's quite nice actually. We'll just leave that as it is and I'll just click OK. Um, I could play around with all those options lots of times if I wanted to. If I had two pieces of text, uh, something else that was written in here as well, uh, just as a little piece of information for you. If I've got uh, a second piece of text I wanted to look exactly the same as that, same, same effects on it, I can actually copy effects. It's something some people don't realise. So I can actually right click and on here I can copy the layer style here. So if I copy that go up to the next one and I can paste that layer style and it'll automatically apply the same effect so making it a quick and easy way to get a number of effects there and I've now got a number of layers that I want to take into After Effects and start animating so I'm going to do that now instead of using this one I'm not going to save this out I've actually got one that I made earlier it's got travel time on it you can see um, and it's got a glow effect so it's got slightly different effects on it but it's basically the same thing so I'm going to use that Right, so I'm going to come out of this, I'm going to go straight into After Effects. Now in After Effects I've already produced an animation to show you, so you can see what we're aiming at. Now I'll just play that back, it might not play very quickly, but you'll get the general idea. Now I've animated the layers to move in a number of directions, adding a nice little effect there. That gives you a general idea of what we're aiming at. Now in particular what I'm looking at as, as a designer when I'm doing this is the use of timing to generate the emphasis. Okay, um, so the movement, speeding up with the travel as it gets to the end, the uh, opposite happening on the opposite direction with the background, and then the time swirling in. And you can see how I focus that around the end point of travel, so it kind of swirls around that point there. And that's, uh, that's quite important. So how the timing, the position of the objects in the top uh, corner makes a nice title 
Okay, and you could almost imagine that the next uh, wipe might come from this side, or there might be some more information to pop up on the screen over here. So you need to be thinking about what's going on there and, uh, and how you might be using it. Now, how did I do that? Let's just go back on this and have a quick look. Um, so let's just, uh, I'm just going to actually delete all this stuff, or just save it first. Oh, I might not have saved it. No, I have saved it, so that's fine. So I'm just going to delete all these, uh, all these uh, compositions and everything. Let's just open that one up. Just get rid of those. Yes, delete those, and I'm going to start again. Okay, so composition. I'm going to new composition. Um, I'm going to leave that as it is. You can see it's on two minutes duration at the moment. Rate 25, and it's set up with the right size here, uh, according to the height of the uh, of the image I just made. Okay. Um, so if you need to change any of that stuff, then you can do that now. Okay. Click OK, and your composition is set up. Now I'm going to go and get uh, the images that I've. That I've got. So uh, all I need to do is dub double click on this area. So this is where it holds all of your resources that you're going to use. This is the timeline down here and this is your work area. Um, and obviously there are different panels that pop up and close down depending on what you've got going on on the screen and, uh, and what you click on. So it's not a set thing. If you ever get lost you can always go and reset or uh, click on these things to try and uh, sort out your workspace. So you can reset them so it looks exactly as it did when it first came up, so if you need to. Um, okay, so let's import. So double click there, that will pop open um, your uh, files or wherever you saved them. And you can go and find the Photoshop file. In this case, I saved it as try one. I'm going to click on open. And it's got import as footage, composition, or retain layer styles. Um, so you want to do a composition. Don't retain layer styles, just do composition for now and click uh, open. Okay. Um, in here it says, do you want to merge layer styles into footage or do you want ed editable layer styles? Well, in this case, we're going to merge them. We don't want to be able to edit what we did to the text there. So we'll just merge them down so that it's one thing. Um, you should try out the different kinds of imports to have a look at what they do. Um, and that's going to help you. Now, what that's done is it's actually made a composition for us. Um, but we don't want that. We're going to use composition one. So with composition one selected, composition one down here. And we can just go in this folder and you should have all the parts there, all the layers laid out for you. So I can pick up background two. This should be the one with a blur on it. There we go. That's the one with a blur on it. I'm just using this image here to find out. So that's the one with the blur. I'm going to drag that down and put it in. And you can see that the size has been sized down to fit into the screen. We didn't want that. I want to actually make it slightly bigger. So I'm going to press control. I'm going to drag that up. Oh, control doesn't work. There are shift, sorry, shift in this program, not control. Uh, drag that up so it's a little bit bigger. And then I'm just going to elongate it a little bit. I'm just going to stretch it a little bit this way. Uh, so I've got enough space there. Okay, now I'm going to drag it over to this side. All right, and so I can start animating. Now, there's all sorts of shortcut tools that you can use, and I'm going to be using most of the time I animate using this uh, timeline panel down here. Um, sometimes I use the effects panel. In this case, we're going to be using um, the, uh, the, the uh, position of the object. So if I press P, I can actually open up the position because this layer is selected, background layer is selected, it actually opens up the position. If I just click on this arrow, it'll open up all the variables for me to choose from. And there's position in the middle. So just so that I can see more, you know, if I have multiple layers selected, pressing P means that position will open up for all of them and then I can just work with the position. I'm going to switch on this little stopwatch here and that means I'm ready to start keyframing and it's going to put the first keyframe in. Okay, so there it is, that's what it looks like, little keyframe there. Now, if this is collapsed, the keyframe will look grey. Okay, so sometimes you can see little grey dots um, instead of seeing uh, yellow dots, and that just means that there's keyframes on that frame, but, uh, but you just can't see the actual channel that it's programmed into. So each one of these is called a channel. Okay, so um, yeah, let's sort of just move it on. We don't need two minutes at all, we need about a couple of seconds. I'm just going to move it on, and then I can move this object over happy with the position I could do that interactively or I could go and actually use the position uh, variables here so I can drag these sideways and they will alter the position as well um, and you can see it automatically records that change okay so there it is recording the change all right so there's a little skill here that we just need to do because you see that's uh, going um, at the same speed all the way along now what I want to do is try and make that a little bit more interesting um, and in this case I'm going to use something called ease in and ease out. Let's just have a quick look so you can see what's going on. So we've got two keyframes there, let's just zoom in so you can see what's going on there a bit better. So I've got two keyframes at the moment they're both going flat. Now I could pull these little handles about to change the pattern of that if I wanted to or I can right click and I go keyframe assistant and I just ease it in 
and ease it out on that side. Okay, if that doesn't seem to have worked properly or doesn't seem to be doing anything much, I think it will have done. Let's just have a look. No, it doesn't seem to have done anything actually, so let's just uh, try this. There we go, so I clicked the wrong way around so it was ease out, I need to do not ease in. So let's have a look at that. So hopefully that will speed up and then stop. Okay, so a little bit of a change in, in the pattern there. And again, like I said, you can pick up this and you can change the, the pattern of those curves and you can interact with them if you need to, so you can generate the shape that you want. I'm not going to spend any time doing that, fiddling around with it and getting it right, because it's not important. It's not going to teach you anything by me doing that. I'm going to go straight on. I'm going to add my extra layer. So I'm just going to uh, zoom that up and then just go to my next layer. Let's do, uh, let's do travel. Pull that down. Um, that's behind the layer at the moment, so you can see it's hiding behind it, and I want it to be on top of it. So I'm just going to drag that up until I see a solid black line, and that's going to allow me to drop that on top there. So there we go. Um, and then I can resize it so that it's, uh, again, press shift, so that it's uh, so it's the size that I want. And you can see that I didn't position this one in the center of the image, so I need to, need to do that. Now, just like before, you can see that's a little bit too big now. It's pixelated for me, so I don't like that. I'm just going to make that a bit smaller. Um, so uh, you can see that that's pretty good uh, in the in the right place, and I'm ready to start animating it just as I did before. A nice bit of practice. I can keyframe the, uh, as it travels across the screen. I can actually travel keyframe its uh, travel into the screen. Um, I'm not going to do that. If you need to know how to do it, if you need to remind yourself, go and have a look how I did it with the background. Get position open, keyframe it, etc., etc. Um, that will get that sorted for you. Um, the only thing I did do with this is I added a blur to it. So I added an effect afterwards. So if I just expand this for a second, you see that transform is exactly the same as before. And I can go down and you can see all the transform elements there. Now if I just go over to this side here, there's an effects and presets area. I can either type in blur and see what comes up, or I can go down and see if I can find it by looking through. Okay, so here we've got blur. I can do all sorts of different kinds of blurs here. Um, in this case, I'm going to do a fast blur. Okay, that just makes sense for what I'm going to do. I'm dragging that on, and as soon as I drag that over with the left click, drag it over and let go on the uh, on the frame that I want, it's added an effect, and you see I've got the effects down here where I can edit and play around with them, and I've also got an effects bar opens at the top here, so I can play around with it there. They are exactly the same thing, just different locations on the screen. Okay, so yeah, let's have a look at this. So uh, I can change the blurriness, and again, I can just change it so it turns up a bit, that's way too high. And I can say whether I want it to be horizontal or vertical. So let's go horizontal because we're going to be traveling it sideways, or we would be if we're going to complete the whole thing. Um, and maybe just a little bit higher than that. Okay, and that's kind of where I want it to be in about the middle of this scene. So about the middle of this blur area, that, that's what I want it to look like. So I'm going to add that keyframe in. So that's when I switch on the keyframe. Okay, so I've got it blurred at the beginning, at the, uh, at the midpoint. Then at the beginning, I don't want it blurred. So I can turn that right down to zero, and that will keyframe automatically. And if you don't want this um, this bar open, this graph open, just click here again, this graph editor, and that will collapse that. I didn't make that clear before. Um, so yeah, so that's the blurriness goes right the way over, and then as it stops on the other side, you can see where the keyframe is by that little grey dot I was talking about earlier. I want it to, again, just uh, change that blurriness out again, and that will add another keyframe in. Um, or it should do. Um, so... That's pretty, that's pretty straightforward. We can start adding the uh, the keyframes in. Let's just have a look at those keyframes down here and see if they're actually been put in or not. Uh, yes, oh, the, there wasn't one put in in the middle. So I just need to add that blurriness in there. I don't quite know what happened there, but there we go. Okay, so I've got it happening now and going out again. So if I wanted to change the weight of that, I can actually use the keyframe assistant again. I can do an easy ease, and that might just change how that feels in terms of where it's going. Okay, so you can see it's not quite as polished as the one before. I've got the basics going in, but the timing's not as good. Um, and it's, yeah, it's behaving a little bit slowly at the moment, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, moving straight on, the last one is, again, it's very simple. All I've done is go to um, the last layer, drag it down, and this time I'm going to put it straight on top because I want it on top. Um, did it? Yeah, there it is. And I can reposition that object. And then I can just go through, and in, in this case I used uh, a twirl. Um, but you could use any, any effect that you want down here and you can just have fun, play around, go and find things and exactly the same as I did before, I played around with the settings until I was happy with it and I got uh, I got an effect I liked and uh, and that's it really. So we know how to make keyframes, we know how to, uh, how to get layers in from Photoshop and how to start animating them and making something precise. Um, 
So I suppose the uh, final thing is what you do with that when you've finished. Well, before you go and export that, I've only used, what, three seconds of this, four seconds of this. So the first thing I would do before I go and save that out is I'd go into my composition settings and I'd change the length of that time from two minutes down to four, four seconds. And that means that it's not going to render out a lot of blank space after uh, after it's finished rendering. So that's four seconds now. So I click OK. You can see there's my four seconds. And it should be pretty much the whole animation there. Um, and then I'm ready to go and render that. So uh, unlike other uh, options, I can either add it to a render queue or I can make the movie. It doesn't matter which one. So I can add to render queue in this case. I'm not actually going to render it, but I'll show you the options. So down here, I, there's just two things I need to check before I move on. Firstly, in the output module, I just want to check, click on that orange uh, hyperlink. And I want to make sure that I've got it set up to the file type that I want. So H.264 is a nice compressed HD file format. OK, AVI is going to be a really big file. OK, and some of the other options you might already be familiar with. QuickTime will be a H.264 as well in most cases. OK, so you can set that up. Uh, one thing to note, if you've got audio on your file, you need to tick this. Otherwise, it won't uh, output the audio. OK, click OK and you're done set up. Now, you're just ready to just tell it where to save the object. So output to, and you click on that, and then you can rename it. You tell it to save it wherever you want to save it. Click Save. It's not started yet. You have to click on Render to start it rendering out. If there's no problems, this bar here that's grey at the moment will start filling up with colour, and you'll see some estimated times pop up. And that's it. If you want to save it as it is, so that, it's, uh, so that it remembers all the composition settings you've put in, you need to go to File, Save. Okay, that's different from making a movie, so don't get confused. Uh, thank you, this has been Clarity Design. Hope that's been useful. Covered quite a lot of the basics in there, and uh, hopefully it will enable you to go and uh, start playing around. Do take some time to explore this bar at the top uh, and find out what some of that stuff does. There's some, uh, some fun tools that are going to help you out up there. Hope that's all been clear and nice for you. Thank you.